Welcome everyone to a special bonus anniversary question and answer episode about a month and a half after our anniversary. <laughs> Better late than never. Uh, four years we have been making this podcast. Four years. Four years. And uh, dare I say, four more years. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so we decided to take some listener questions. We did this after our one year anniversary and we have not done it since. Mm-hmm. So we thought it would be a fun time to sit down. Normally you only get your three episodes a month. Um, but we thought, why not? You've been good. Have a treat. <laughs> have a treat. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's been have a lot of fun. an episode as a treat. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Uh, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, these these past four years uh, doing all sorts of uh, amazing games with amazing guests. And um, we tend to be the ones that ask all the questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and we get some wonderful answers from our guests. So we opened the forum to our listeners. Um, and and boy, you, you, you gave us a lot of questions. A uh, lot of things got, to think about, folks. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 56 questions in total. Mm-hmm. Um, a few of them are going to be pretty uh, pretty easy to answer. A few are going to be a lot more thoughtful. Um, there's some advice thrown in there. there. There's all sorts of good stuff uh, to go through. Um, so for our character creation cast for your anniversary, uh, let, let's, let's start it up. Okay. We're going to start this question from listener Ryan. Ryan uh, is testing this form. Ryan what is, is this testing this form. Who is this guy? Oh, weirdo. Uh, Ryan from Appleton, Wisconsin asks, how can I be as cool as you two? Uh, well, Ryan, you can't. Yeah. Um, you Impossible. know, I, I would say it's only possible if you are us two. Mm. So maybe. So good maybe. job, Ryan. Good job being <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, so Ryan, that is the answer. How can you be as cool as us? Just be us. So keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Thanks, Ryan, for the question. Um, <laughs> it's it's a weird answering myself in the third person, but you know what? Past Ryan, uh, that one that one's for you. It's great. That's great. Are you drinking <laughs> Diet Dr Pepper right now? I am drinking a Diet Dr Pepper <gasps> right now. So am I. Oh, soda Please. buddies. <laughs> I also had some Sprecher here too. Um, but it's oh, gone. there you go. Oh, it's gone now. So everyone, uh, Sprecher Root Beer, official beverage of character creation cast. Please call us. Please give me free Sprecher. <laughs> and doc, so, Diet Dr. So Pepper because, uh, goodness gracious, I exist on that right now. It's I love Diet Dr. Pepper. It's so good. It's, it's so, so good. good. It's, it's like the best diet soda. It is like the best diet soda because it uses cherry flavoring, which is one of the most potent flavorings you can have in a soda. And you don't need much of it to give you that nice Flavor. But it's yeah, but it's not cherry the way like cherry coke is because yes. like I can drink cherry coke zero or something like that. But it it's that's like cherry and it's like starting yeah. to get into that cough syrup kind of thing. Yes. Whereas Dr Pepper is like it's just like a little hint of it, but it's still that nice cola feeling. You know, mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. is now an ad for diet Dr Pepper. It also like <laughs> doesn't taste as like diet as most of the other diet sodas. I think. Yeah. Um, so. But without so the like syrupy, gross mouth feeling of regular soda. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's it's delicious. Uh, it's it's not as like artificial f- mm-hmm. tasting yeah. as most other diet sodas, and it's diet. And you know what? Um, that's how you become as cool as us. Drink right diet, there. You go. Diet Drink diet some Dr. diet Dr Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> right. So start a podcast. Uh, don't know anything about your host before you your co host before you start a podcast with them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just like just just trust. Just that randomly not trust a stranger on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. All right. This is this, this is has become advice. an Never impossible. Cut that. Cut do that. not. Do not. <laughs> That's not cool. That's scary. That is scary. <laughs> <laughs> so scary. Uh. Yeah. I guess just drink dive, Doctor Pepper. There you and go. Start a podcast. How about we get into the actual questions? Okay. All right. I, I know I'm a listener of the show as well. I'm not only a fan. Uh, I'm a co-host. <laughs> Many time listener, first time caller. Uh huh. All right. So uh, I guess we can just go back and forth with who reads these, huh? Sure. Sure. I'll do the even numbered one or the, well, see so yours was listed as number two, like shows up as number two. I know. In it's there, fine. So it's even. So I'll do even number ones. You'll do the even rows. I'll okay. do the odd rows. Yeah. Sounds good. 
All right. Our first real question came in from Kevin, um, and Kevin asked uh, if you could gain magical powers, but only if you played a year-long campaign of the worst game showcased on the show, would you do it? Um, have to play one four-hour game every week for a year. Wow, that's, that sounds amazing, actually. Uh, bonus, what power would you gain uh, if it had to be based on that game system? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so w worst game that we've covered. Uh, so I, st I, I made a note on this question and I wrote, they would have to be pretty great magical powers for me to consider playing Marvel superheroes every single week. Or <laughs> the people I was playing with would have to be like fantastic. It would have to be like yeah, the yeah. kind of people that make playing a game like that okay. I mean, honestly, it doesn't stipulate that they have to be people that you don't get along with. Right. right? That's so, what I'm saying. I mean, so, like, really, I feel like I can tolerate a lot of I things can tolerate in the name of that, too. like, fellowship kind of fun, right? Yeah. Which, when we did that episode, you determined was one of your top kinds anyway. That, like, yep. that's that's a lot of what you're there for. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not as high on that scale, um, but I definitely, you know, for a chance to hang out with my friends... Mm -hmm. I'm I'm willing to put up with a lot. I mean, honestly, especially if I get like, magical powers too. Honestly, yeah, seriously, like, like that's a okay. pretty good trade off. <laughs> this is a really good deal, honestly. Okay, so if you can if you can uh, tell amazing stories in Dungeons and Dragons, which doesn't have a mechanical system to tell amazing stories in it, right? You can do that in Marvel superheroes from 1984 slash 86. Right. I would be 100% okay with making a wacky character in Marvel superheroes and, like, you know, playing the heck out of it and, and like, hamming up the drama and, you know, doing all that sort of fun stuff. And maybe I would even throw in betrayals uh, for you, Amelia. Wow. Uh, for me? For Just for you. Wow. Um, <laughs> a little light backstabbing. Um, a little light backstabbing. It's fine. Um, but yeah, the doing that for a whole year, that'd be fine. Uh, what sort of magical powers? I mean, goodness, you're, you're talking about literally any superpower in the world. Um, that's, that's hard to wrap my head around because like, but it says one... if it has to be based on the game system you play. Yes. Right. So like in my head, I'm thinking right now, like Marvel superheroes is, is, fresh in my mind and it's top on my list um <laughs> but like that doesn't really help answer what kind of magical powers it would be unless it was mm -hmm. the power to like be really good at math maybe like if uh, i could be like maybe. a number genius oh yeah it would be hyper intelligence right i mean maybe but like with numbers because like you can be hyper intelligent mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways i mean that's fair too yeah um goodness so yeah i mean i think if it was the superpower to be good at math because then but then, like, also, I wouldn't hate that game as much if I was right. good at math. That's part of why I hate it is because I'm not good at math and math is not fun for well, me. Well, that's the thing is you have to suffer through it to get the powers. Oh, okay. So, so like, it can't, so, I won't be until the end of the year. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, I mean, then, I mean yeah, I feel like the power to be really good at math would be, like, something I mm -hmm. earned through that trial. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness, I've got a lot of answers for this. Um, of course you do. Like, like, like teleportation. Would mm -hmm. be phenomenal because zero travel time. Right. Uh, well, like that's a, I can think of lots of magical powers I would love to have. Right. But are they based on the game? Yeah. I mean. Well, I mean, technically could, in Marvel superheroes, you could have anything, but that feels like cheating. It it kind of does, but it's it's in within the spirit of the question, right? I guess. Okay. Um, other, I feel like mine was more in the spirit of the question than like teleportation, because then like any game, I would be like, well, it's the power to play with my friends. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, teleportation <laughs> will always be the answer. That's fair. That's fair. Um, OK, something a little bit more nuanced. Um, I don't know if I could do like the the whole uh, I don't know. I would I would almost have to do like a magical transformation sequence, like shape changing, I guess, or, or whatever it's mm -hmm. whatever I rolled up weirdly uh, would be really interesting. Um just because then I could be like the ultimate cosplayer. Yeah. That'd be fun. You just like have like know. a like a magical form, like a yeah, alternate just have form. A magical form. 
or yeah. something, however you want to. Yeah, with, with built-in uh, super costume. I don't know. Yeah. But you don't have any superpowers except changing into that costume. <laughs> I mean, you're like, <laughs> like your power fair. is to shift into that costume. But then like once you're in it, it's like, crap, what now? <laughs> what happens? That's true. That's true. I guess I, I, I it would take a little bit more thought then uh, to figure out what sort of uh, magical power I would need to obtain. Uh, I guess. I'm guessing there's more magical girl questions later on, though. So maybe we can come back to that. Probably. I'll save it for that. I'm sure that. I guess uh, I would probably choose the one where you can create whatever matter you want in the world Mm. and then solve, like, scarcity and world hunger. Oh, sure. Just collapse the economy. No big. It doesn't matter. The economy wouldn't matter at that point. Everybody's accounted for. It's fine. That's right. (laughs) That's true. Why do do I care if capitalists suffer? (laughs) Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. All right. All right. So our next question is from Caleb, who says, have you ever considered doing a character build of a LARP? If no, that's okay. If yes, may I suggest mistwood.org? Have we ever considered doing a character build of a LARP? I would say like casually, um, you know, I think that's something that we've been like, oh, that might be Mm -hmm. interesting. To Uh, cover a LARP, yeah. Yeah, I think our big thing is that... um, we are not really like in those circles, right? So a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of the games we pick are things that we've we've seen pop up on our Twitter timelines or we've right. read for something else. I know a couple that we've covered in the last year were things that I found while I was doing my Ennies reading. Mm-hmm. Um, a few things that we will cover after July when I'm done reading will be things yep. that I found in my Ennies <laughs> reading this year. Um, or, you know, people who have approached us and said, you know, mm-hmm. hey, I have this game coming out. Would you be willing to cover it? Yes. So... A lot of the games are kind of chosen because those are the circles that we move in and the things that mm-hmm. we personally are interested in. Um, so it's definitely not because we aren't like we don't think LARP is cool. I think it's just for me, it's a lack of like, I don't know where to start or like who to talk to. Right. Or what to I mean, do we, know, or, we know a couple people in yeah. this sphere. Um, I know uh, what was it Alex Roberts, Alex Roberts uh, started yeah. in that kind of sphere. Mm-hmm. And, um, so there, there's some people we could probably reach out to uh, for that. Um, I think it also I, is going to be... depend strongly on the on the LARP and like yes. what that looks like and stuff too because it is um, because it has that live action aspect yeah. to it, um, which I know is is more the play than the character creation in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. But um, we are still an audio medium, yeah. So if there are some kind of limits there right. too. Um, I, I think I think we could probably put ourselves in the right headspace for it, though. Yeah, for um, sure. I think for me, it's it's just been more of like a lack of like, yeah, knowledge of like mm-hmm. what I'm even looking at or where to look for it. It's just like, right. you know, these are the things I you know I'm I'm all about like the bright shiny object too, because mm-hmm. um, I've got all kinds of ADHD, and so like it's like <laughs> ooh, look at this new thing, you know, um, yeah. And I think so even sometimes when I'm like, oh, LARP would be a good idea. And then like a new RPG comes across my desk and I'm like, but what about this? What you know, about it's like, this? It's, it's whatever is the last book I saw, honestly, is like mm-hmm. what we're going to cover. <laughs> like what is the last <laughs> book I looked at? <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, is it the best method? No. Has it worked so far? You bet. <laughs> well, right. And, and honestly, we only get 12 series a year, right? Right. Um, that's, and Yeah, that's the other thing, too, is I know we talked in our episode zero about like our list of 200 some rpgs and like we've not even made a dent in that not even close um because we've covered so many things that weren't on that list Mm -hmm. on top of the ones that were and um all these people all these nerds out there keep writing new games (laughs) ridiculous it's true honestly um if if uh if a good larp comes across our desk um we'll we'll consider covering it uh and i we've got a suggestion for mistwood.org i'm curious mm-hmm. uh we'll check it out we'll see uh what we can do if we if we can make it fit and uh we'll see what we can do from there maybe, maybe year 5 is the year we cover a larp yeah yeah, I mean, it's definitely Maybe. something that I'm I'm interested in. I'm very curious um, about it, uh, yeah. and we we try to vary our series enough so that we aren't covering the same sorts of systems all the time. Um, yeah, we try know, to kind it, of go back and forth between like crunchy and rules light and new yeah. and old, and you know, I know like obviously this last month was like an old one, and then like a slightly less old one. Yep, like, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> that was because we we because it was series fifty. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, we do try to kind of change it up and 
mm-hmm. mix things in there so that there's a little something for everybody. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah, we'd like to. So I, I think the answer is yes, we've considered it. Um, yeah. Just haven't gotten to it yet. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Caleb. Um, so this next question comes from the Dark Fiddler. Um, uh, they asked, is there any game you've really wanted to cover, but just haven't been able to make work yet? Uh, oof. Short answer, yes, yeah. obviously. Um, uh, too many, I would say. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there are definitely lots of games, because like I said, we had our list of like 235 or something that, uh, granted, those are the ones other people had suggested. So mm-hmm. there were some on there that I was like, I don't know what this is. Um, which obviously is not a reason that we wouldn't cover it, um, mm-hmm. because you can hear in our masks episode where I go, so explain to me what a playbook is. Yep. <laughs> um, because I had not played any PBTA at that point. Yeah. Um, and obviously now that's become a pretty regular part of our vocabulary, but, um, yeah. So not knowing what a game is certainly has never stopped us before. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that there are some holes. There are. There are some that we haven't covered because of, like, the politics around them. Um, mm-hmm. Like, we haven't covered any White Wolf games. Yep. Um, for reasons. I, I, I was, I've been thinking about those, um, Because like, I really would. I, I do feel like that's a whole sort of in our mm-hmm. um, oeuvre, I guess. Our repertoire. Yeah, our repertoire. There you go. Um, <laughs> because, you know, we talk a lot about, like, the, the way, especially when we have Jeff and John on, about, like, the way games mm-hmm. kind of split from that, like, okay, things went the palladium way. And then, you know, there was the vampire, the masquerade way, yeah. you know, that like things kind of split off and it could have been either or. Yep. Um, and so I really do, you know, I, I want to cover some of those like D10 based systems. Um, I know we had early on a number of people that offered to cover some of those games with us. And I, mm-hmm. I still would like to, um, I think that's a thing that like we have to kind of, Unfortunately, the industry being the way it is yeah. um, and people being how people be, uh, we have to kind of continually assess like what our comfort level is with right. the politics of things around that. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, while I do feel a little bad being like, yeah, I want to cover some White Wolf games because um, they're not great. Um, but I, mm-hmm. I do like from a sort of historical standpoint or a completionist standpoint, I do think that there's mm-hmm. still a lot to learn from those games, even if the companies if making them it's... don't have good business practices. Right. You know, or, or so it's like, I still want to talk about problematic, like, problematic, right? Right. I still want to talk about the impact that they have had on the world of design and the way we make games and mm-hmm. how we play them and what we, you know, look for in games and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah definitely for me, I think that's kind of, where my mind sort of immediately goes is like, that feels mm-hmm. like a, a hole in, um, yes. in our catalog that yes. I, I really would like to find a way to do something about. So we'll mm-hmm. see, um, you know, maybe in the future we'll, we'll do something with like a really big caveat at the beginning or, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how we'll do it. Um, <laughs> because I do, I just, I really want to be able to do the comparative analysis there. Like from exactly. a, like a, not a promotional of like, everybody should go play this game, but like, here's what we've, learned from what these games have brought to the industry yeah know? absolutely so. yeah i think there's a lot to learn from that too um and and honestly we could we kind of just did that with series 50 with D and mm-hmm. and all the the wacky supplements that we threw at it yeah. um and it was it was a thought exercise and it had some really fantastic uh you know conversation that surrounded all of that yeah um and and i think we could get the same sort of thing with with any any of the white wolf games yeah uh with the right guests so um, yeah, I think we could, we could definitely cover that. Uh, we just wanted to be a little bit more cautious surrounding it because of all the controversy in the past. Um, there's a couple other games like that, that have been huge impacts on the industry that, you know, we've got them on our list they're on our, like, you know, maybe someday we'll, we'll cover these, but we're mm-hmm. not like super enthused on diving in right away simply because, you know, of some of the problematic nature within the game itself or the company or or the people behind the game, you know? Yeah. And and I I, I want to say, like, from a, a standpoint of, like, being a creator, putting things out into the world, um, it's really frustrating sometimes mm-hmm. because there's, like, there's things that I want to talk about and there's things there that I, I think are, are helpful and cool. But I also, like, am a person with a platform. 
right? Mm-hmm. Like people listen to the things that I say, you know, whoever's listening yeah. to this episode right now is listening to the things that I say, whether you take me mm-hmm. seriously or not is up to you. Right. But I don't want to promote things that I know are problematic or, you know, companies that, or people that have hurt people or anything like that. Yeah. Like I don't, I, it is a responsibility that I take seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I still get frustrated <laughs> because it's like, <laughs> I wanted to, I want to be able to do like, just let me like the thing. Right. Can people stop being crappy so that I can just like the things that I like without exactly. having to like, <laughs> you know, like I don't want to have to do a full like research dive before we cover mm-hmm. things, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's unfortunately like the older a game is like the more research we have to do before we yeah. can feel comfortable covering it and making sure that we have the right people talking about mm-hmm. it. And it's all that kind, kind of, of stuff. exhausting, right? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. Especially when you're, you know, like a hobbyist. And w- the way things are, unfortunately, in the RPG industry, too, is like, you don't always know. Mm-hmm. None of this is really answering the question of like, what game we really want to cover. Um, <laughs> but it is, a, it is a little, you know, like I said, it a little peek behind bit. the curtain of like, unfortunately, this industry sucks sometimes. And yeah. um yeah, I think there's a lot that we would like to cover if people didn't suck. And yeah. I always have this like nagging fear of like doing the wrong thing mm-hmm. um, because I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't yeah, want to hurt anybody. Absolutely. And I take it very seriously. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, like I know that you're the same. You don't want to hurt anybody. And so we want to yeah. make sure that our decisions are are sound. But unfortunately, this industry just like makes it really hard because so much stuff is word of mouth and... It does. You know. Uh, and, and honestly, pretty much any fandom is going to be kind of that way, yeah. right? Like yeah, if you, sure. if you if you're doing a podcast that has guests on it, you're going to run into that every now and then. Right. And we we just try our best. We do our due diligence as much as we can. Yeah. And you know, if something slips through the cracks, uh we'll we, fix it from there. Yeah, we'll I mean, like, I definitely here, right? You know, like don't be like okay, we're like totally afraid to do anything ever and like, you know, it, cuz it's not that. Um but mm-hmm. I, I do think it is it's something that we don't just like take casually that it's not like, well, yeah. we'll have somebody on and if it turns out bad, it turns out bad. You know, it's like, no, yeah. like we, <laughs> we try, we mm-hmm. try and we want to feature games that are, are good and help people. And, um, absolutely. who boy, is that sometimes hard with those older ones? Ab- <laughs> but, but I mean, Jeff and John make it easy. So <laughs> they do, they do because they're very quick to be like, here's why it's bad. And like, uh-huh. great. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, um and, and it's fun to, to look at games that way. It is. Um, it is. So, I mean, I mean that that's part of my answer to this question. As yeah, well. sorry, I took up like a um, lot of time with that. <laughs> <laughs> but but on a more uh, on a more positive note, uh, the the system that I've been like chomping at the bit to cover because I don't know uh, hardly anything about it, and people keep talking about it, uh, Lumen, and we 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 just eventually. we just can't right now, but eventually. Goodness gracious, we'll get there. As I said, uh, after July, we're going to have a whole lot of things on the list. Exactly. Yeah. So um, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun uh, to figure out what that system's all about. Um, I've been very curious about it since I heard people talking about it. Um, and and we'll we'll get there when we get there. Yeah, I think unfortunately that's like the answer for a lot of our stuff too, though, because as you said, yeah. we can only do twelve a year. Yeah, so it's like, we're, well, we're only the two people. Um, <laughs> throw it on the pile. I know. <laughs> Yep. All yep. right. So the answer to that question, uh, Dark Fiddler, there are lots of games that we would love to cover. Some that we haven't covered because they're problematic. Some that we can't cover because Amelia's under an NDA. Uh, some that we just like, there are only so many hours in the day. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But we'll, uh, get, we'll get to the ones we can when we can. We will. Uh, and it'll be fun. Stay and tuned. we hope you enjoy. Yeah. So now you have to keep listening is really the answer to that question. Yes. Like, listen along and find out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, okay. So character creation is the best part of role playing games. Indisputable. I like that you yep. put a period at the end of that sentence. That was not a question. <laughs> what is the worst part? This one yep. is from Danny, who this was like the fifth question that Danny wrote. So Danny wrote that it was from Steve. JK, it's Danny again. Uh-huh. So Yeah, we, we randomized all the questions to out of out of fairness. Uh, we thought we would just randomize them so that way, like, if we had to split up the episodes, uh, you know, it'd be uh, 
not everybody would just be having their 10 questions in a row. Right. So we wouldn't have a full Danny episode. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's no. pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, yep. Um, okay. So what is the worst part for you, Ryan? Uh, the worst part of role-playing games? Well, uh, scheduling mm-hmm. to actually play the games is pretty bad um, as, as an adult. As, as an adult with a family, scheduling is a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's bad in the day-to-day, like, I need to experience playing role-playing games, right? Yeah, I actually didn't write scheduling. I don't know how I missed that one. Yeah. Uh, I would say the worst part of But maybe of because that's, like, games, not part of role-playing. Like, that's, like, you don't even get to role-play if you can't do the scheduling. I guess that's true. Okay, so the worst part of actually playing role-playing games that's mm-hmm. a, that's a very interesting um uh twist on the question okay um i would say then it would have to be gosh you know i'd i'll, I'll let you go first and then ryan's i'll see like, if, all if parts of games are good all parts of games are i just fun. love i'm ryan and i just love games i just love it <laughs> i just all. love it so uh, much i love all the math i love all the role oh, play see, i love yeah, all the that's story on my list. okay so <laughs> Uh, number one, making choices of how to spend my XP. Anything that has XP spends where I have to decide when leveling up what thing I'm going to take or not take or what skills I'm going to buy or not buy. I have a very difficult time with because analysis paralysis <laughs> is real. <laughs> and when you're playing a game, unlike when we're making characters, these choices yeah. do, in fact, have consequences. Yeah. So I find it very difficult. So this is definitely where we differ because I'm like, yes, gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, right. Like, I, I love <laughs> I love the idea of, like, getting new things. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like this is the this is the the two sides of the ADHD coin, right? Of like, yep. ooh, I love the new shiny thing I can do. Oh, you mean I have to pick only one shiny thing? That's really yep. difficult. That is difficult. Um, number two, managing encumbrance rules or spell spots. Spell <laughs> slots, spell splats. I said that's that's you, you heard me correctly. Spell splats, um, <laughs> because related to number th- number three, Ryan's gonna laugh at me because I can't make the number three. Number three, uh, math. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't like inventory management at mm-hmm. all. Um, I don't like it in in video games. I don't like it in role playing games. Mm-hmm. In I play when I played Fallout Four. I picked up everything. I opened every box and I picked up everything. Oh, yes. And then when my inventory was too full, I would like carefully like pick the smallest amount of stuff that I could put down. And then I would go back and I would craft a bunch of stuff and then like, you know, like dump everything into my my toolbox or wherever you could hold things Um, because I don't like to get rid of things. And, you know, like I'm I'm playing uh borderlands and wonderlands right now too and like my backpack is constantly full because it's like i I know that i don't need four sniper rifles but like what if i do what if like what if we come across that one situation where i do yeah 99 health potions or nothing um surprisingly my house is not like that i am not a hoarder in my real life like in my Mm -hmm. real life i'm a serial purger of things i'm like get this crap out of my space if i have to look at it but in a video game it like goes in your backpack and you don't see it Yep. And then I can just keep it forever. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. I don't like that. Um, and then when I played L5R, I, I, I played, you know, a magic user and I had to like keep track of spell slots. And it's like my my notes for every game is like little tally marks in the corner of like how many void spells mm. did I use today? Like, no, just let me have fun. Just let me do the thing without having to do the math. Yes. Or like make difficult decisions about what cool things I can like that's really what it comes down to all of my answers are like don't make me decide which cool things I can have let me have all the cool things right exactly which that I, makes sense. I know is like not really how games work because <laughs> like it's wholly unbalanced yeah um but but really like just let me have all the cool things I don't understand why I can't just have everything that I want exactly when well, I want why it not? why not <laughs> exactly so that's, um, those are my answers. <laughs> <laughs> I I think um, the the probably the worst part is the stuff that takes away player agency. Ooh, um, that's probably that's going to be my answer for this one. Um, just because like it a it it 
it smells feels gross. awfully a lot of the old antagonist GM trope, mm-hmm. right? And that's that's annoying in and of itself, right? I, I don't like For it us, when... Do you think that there are people out there that are like, I like that dynamic? I, like, I there are people that I'm it. like, I'm I like... I guarantee it. I'm a bottom and I'm into that. Yes. Um, in In certain words... Yes. <laughs> You're like, I wouldn't put it that way, but <laughs> I mean, cause like, I'm not into that, but like, right. And, and honestly there, yeah, I mean, I can see it from both the, the, the GM and the player standpoint of, I mean, of, I can totally see it from the GM standpoint of being oh, like, absolutely. that's like a sweet power trip. Right. Like, you know, but having that, that power dynamic and then like taking away player, player agency kind of is it, just kind of gross. It me it's, out. It does. It's because it's like, OK, you're you're telling me exactly what's happening to my character, that the the only thing that I'm, quote unquote, allowed to control in this entire world. Right. And something that like we all very honestly and openly like put part of ourselves into, like that's what yeah. role playing is, is like I am inhabiting that thing. Yeah. And to like take away some of that is, you know. Mm. W- without consent. Right. Right. I guess. Right. There um, are, take, yeah, there are times where, you know, I think in our D&D episodes, which people will hear now, um, I think Dylan talked about that, about like, you know, instead of killing the player, like, yeah. take, con- you know, say like, okay, fine, but I get control of your character at some point. Mm-hmm. And when people buy into that, that's great. Absolutely. But like, yeah, anytime that there's like, oh, like mind control and like, like, blah, blah. <laughs> yep. Mm-mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, get rid of that icky stuff mm-hmm. and uh, and good to go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, this next one is from Anonymous. Uh, we do not have a name on this one. So uh, if this is your question, uh, thank you. congratulations and thank you. Um, are there any dense or crunchy systems you want to make a character in? Playing is, of course, not required. Hmm. Mm. Uh, yes. I mean, for okay. the show, yes. Yeah. Um, I really want to cover riffs Ugh. just because of that. <laughs> I thought you were going to like say something like new and interesting, like a cool new game that was crunchy that you heard about or something. Like, no, I mean, it was just riffs okay, again. I, I, I do. I do. Dear audience, <laughs> I was fooled. I was I fooled. Wanna... I thought maybe we were going in a different direction this one time. Nope. Nope. <laughs> but after four years, I should have learned. Fool me Should've... once, Ryan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no, uh, a more serious uh, answer. Not that Rifts isn't serious. Um, the new Marvel game, um, I he- keep hearing it's bad. I keep hearing it's like super, super crunchy. I really want to know why it's bad. And that's why I want to create a character for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that one, like, I really want to reserve judgment on it because it is just a mm-hmm. playtest document at this point. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've read some playtests of games, and I know that, like, the point of a playtest is to put it out in the world, have more people touch it, and say, this thing did not work at my table. Like, yeah. your theory is not practice. Mm-hmm. And so I, I want to reserve judgment, but I also am like... Are you going to rewrite that game then? Because like, <laughs> yeah, I don't well, know. That, what that's you the like, thing. You, is like, it... develop this like whole new like six one six mechanic where actually one of the dice just has two sixes. That's what the six one six thing. Like the one and the six are the same. Um, and it just is. I don't know. I'm 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 really torn on it because like, I haven't I haven't in all honesty read the playtest document yet. I'm just like mm-hmm. picking up what I can here and there. Um, And I think it's, I don't know if it's trying to walk this line, but it is walking this line between Mm -hmm. like, hey, you loved Marvel games. Hey, you like games? (laughs) Yeah. Because those crowds are not the same necessarily. Right. Right. You know, like the D&D crowd is not the same people that are like playing Marvel superheroes. Exactly. Um, Mm -hmm. And and it feels like it's trying to bridge that gap between like, you remember really super country Marvel. Here's also Marvel. Um, and mm-hmm. people who are like, oh, you love games? Look, we made a Marvel one of those. Yes. And I don't know that it's doing that successfully mm-hmm. um, or coherently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I really want to see what they do with the feedback that people give them. Yeah. Um, I, because I, it feels can... very unfinished. I mean, it's playtest. It's playtest. Yeah. Um, 
if they can treat it like a play test and actually take to heart the suggestions and fixes that people are suggesting mm -hmm. and and actually fix the the issues with the system for the full release, I'm 100% for that. I mean, even if that yeah. requires revamping the entire, like, right. mechanical system for Look, the system. Look, we completely reanimated everything. Sonic in that first movie. We can rewrite a game. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Get rid of those teeth. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what you know what hey everyone out there who is writing a playtest document if you get some feedback and you don't love it just remember you too can take away the teeth exactly <laughs> that's the lesson here <laughs> um yeah no i i, I want I, I want to think that you know like again that's what a playtest is for mm -hmm. right that's why you do it because otherwise they just like put it out and be like yeah. um on the other hand it, it's not a small developer making a game it's marvel Right. Um, and, you know, granted, they've brought in games people to do that. Mm -hmm. But an entity like Marvel does not pivot. Like, they, right. they don't. <laughs> I'm pivoting, everyone. You yeah. can't see it. But, <laughs> um, so I just wonder, you know, like, will they be able to move? How many, how many cooks are in the kitchen on this one? Yep. How many, you know, like, how easily can they integrate any, you know, potential changes? So I guess this will be a fun right. one to watch, I think, honestly. Exactly. Because we don't always get the playtest and get to see what that, like, initial rough draft looked like. Right. Um, and I think the chance to compare it to whatever the final draft is will be kind of an interesting exercise for game designers in general. So to oh, see, absolutely. like, you know, hey, um, what your final product is, it doesn't have to, like, you don't have to get it right on the first try. Mm -hmm. You just don't. Um, yeah. So. I mean, I, I look at the, the first uh, version of Chimera and boy, howdy, is it different than what it is yeah. now. Uh, and like I, I had all sorts of things in there that were just this is what games are, right? Right. And my goodness, it was crunchy for a PBTA game and it was just clunky and it it didn't fully work mechanically conceptually mm -hmm. it was fine and that's what we held on to but yeah i think that's uh, one of the beauties of playtesting too is like you know you get it in front of people and it's like okay we were able to play this game without any of these pieces yes chuck them out you know mm -hmm. like it, you start with something that's really bulky and clunky and you know like you sit down to run it and you realize like, okay, this, like, we don't even need this. We didn't even look at that page, mm -hmm. like gone. Um, none of this is answering the question that this, this <laughs> listener has asked us about <laughs> crunchy systems. This is just our hot takes on play testing at this point. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know that I have one off the top of my head. I'm, I'm trying to think of ones that I've read mm -hmm. recently. And um, it, it feels like any, any, a lot of the newer games are not as crunchy. They're not. No. Um, no, and I and I don't know that even, like, the crunchier ones that I've read are ones that, like, the character creation was particularly, like, interesting or innovative. Right. Because um, that's, you know, that's really the sort of lens that I'm looking at this through is, like, there are certainly, like, crunchy games that are, are doing cool new things that I'm I'm kind of interested in trying out, but I don't know mm -hmm. that the character creation itself was the part that piqued my interest yep um yeah no not off the top of my head i they're just not my thing because there's so much math too much math too much uh math. see previous question too many choices <laughs> too many you know that's yep there's a time and a place and it's uh over there far from me exactly yeah unless you get superpowers with uh hyper math powers right right unless i there play that year-long marble game there mm -hmm. you go <laughs> <laughs> tying it all together yeah uh, our next question uh, is from name redacted for my protection. It's don't tell anybody. Too late, Danny. I told everyone it was from you. Um, no. Oh, no. I can't, we I can't just read trusted. them verbatim. What are you doing? I can't be trusted. Um, <laughs> Ryan, when you edit this, can you just put a like a little beep in there or something? When I said, oh, sure. I'll see what I can do. I said the name. But then leave it in the three other times after that that I said Danny. Just bleep it the first time. <laughs> I'll just bleep it the first time. And then leave in this whole discussion of whether you should bleep it. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's editing. Uh, what are your most divisive food opinions? For example, I enjoy Hawaiian pizza and I think mayonnaise ruins everything it touches. Get out of here, Danny. Mayonnaise <laughs> is the perfect sandwich lubricant. 
I believe uh, that there is audio of Ryan and I discussing the mayonnaise versus Miracle Whip argument somewhere. Um, I am hardcore team mayonnaise. I don't need okay. that tanginess anywhere on my food. I, I, I understand that. Okay, so here's my my uh, hot take. Okay. Uh, Miracle Whip's better, but garbage. mayonnaise is not garbage. Oh. Okay. So the, interesting. The In texture. classic Ryan fashion, where everyone takes a side, Ryan has found a way to not take a side. <laughs> I've got that a might side be like is... the most Ryan statement I've ever heard. <laughs> I prefer Miracle Whip, but I still like mayonnaise. Yeah. Pick a team, so, Ryan. I, okay. I don't, I wouldn't say I like mayonnaise. Okay. I tolerate it. Okay. Th- there, there is a distinct difference yeah, that's, there. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I, I heavily prefer Miracle Whip. Um, mayonnaise has that weird, like, like slurpy texture when You're you first me, you get it out of the Miracle jar. You Miracle Whip isn't slurpy? It, no, it's smooth. No, it still takes the shape. Like, it still doesn't, like, stick to the sides of the bottle. It's still, like, the same, no, I, like, I get congealed, that, but when you, when, when like, you s- gloopy nonsense. It's an emulsion. It's, it, it's smooth. It's nice and smooth. I've never I've never seen a jar of Miracle Whip that wasn't smooth, whereas mayonnaise was, like, uh, just, like, scooping out, uh, like, tapioca. Pudding. No, because it's not, like, no, because, like, tapioca has, like, little chunks in it, and mayonnaise doesn't. No, I mean, aside from the chunks, it's still got that, like, like, you, you, you leave an imprint of what you I don't know what's not smooth about, up. like, a sort of pudding-y texture. What's not smooth about that? It's, I don't know. It, am I getting the wrong mayo? Because, like, the mayo that I have seen, fresh out of the jar, maybe not the stuff that you've already mixed and stuff, fresh out of the jar, that first scoop is just, like... And okay, do you stir your Greek yogurt, too, when you open it? I don't eat Greek yogurt, so I don't oh, know. see, there's your problem. <laughs> I don't even know. Are you supposed talking. to stir mayo before you use it? I don't know. I can't say that I've ever really thought too hard about it, Ryan. I guess. All right. But I've so never I guess like, my, had unsmooth mayo. Like my most divisive food opinion then apparently is the texture of mayo. It, it's not smooth. <laughs> I just like you can have all the opinions in the world that you want about mayonnaise, but like it is smooth. It's smoothish, yeah. No, it's smooth. I'm really <laughs> concerned about this, like, chunky mayonnaise you're eating. <laughs> it's not chunky. It's not. Okay. I, I maybe just don't I'm not understand expo- the words you're saying. <laughs> maybe I'm not explaining it correctly. I, uh, all I know is I have a problem with it. Uh, people might know what I'm talking about. I'm not sure. Um, it doesn't ruin everything it touches. Uh, sorry, Danny. But uh, it's it's still not the greatest, uh, in my opinion. Um I don't know. I think my divisive opinion is that I actually don't have a hot take about Hawaiian pizza. Like, everybody's like, it's a great, like, it's the best thing ever. Or I totally hate it. And I'm like, I'm allergic to pineapples. So (laughs) (laughs) I still eat them anyway sometimes because they're good. Um, They just make my tongue kind of itchy. Which, Mm -hmm. fun fact, I just thought that that happened to everybody Mm -hmm. until I was like, 25 ish maybe like 20 25 somewhere in there and my sister was like mom you know how like when you eat pineapple and your tongue gets really itchy and my mom's like no and I was like yeah no it totally does and she was like yeah your tongue gets really itchy but then like you know like later it gets better but like you know and I was like yeah because of like the acid in the pineapple my mom's like no that's an allergic reaction (laughs) (laughs) I just assumed it made everybody's tongues itchy I mean I guess Um, I I get that way with bananas too sometimes but I still eat them yeah, because they're delicious, right? Like, you can just, like, not eat food because you're allergic to it. Come on. <laughs> Suck it up, well, peanut people. Okay, okay. No, I'm, just <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, no, that's the story of how Amelia didn't know what an allergy was until she was, like, 25. Yeah, there um, you go. I, yeah, I mean, I don't have a hot take on on Hawaiian pizza because I just don't yeah. eat it very often. Um, I don't know. Do I have other other food opinions that people would think were weird? Yeah. And I think I mean, most of them are just, you know, sort of like which side you fall on the like, is ranch dressing delicious or not? Right. Um, uh, that's, that's another You know, like, do uh, you thing, like right? Coke or Pepsi? Or do you like, I think most of mine are kind of like that. Like, oh, I don't mm-hmm. like eggs. You don't like eggs? I don't like okay. eggs. Um, like any way, shape, or form <sighs> of eggs? Hard boiled eggs are okay. Interesting. My, um, my, my wife is 100% the opposite of, uh, scrambled eggs 
hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Any th- any other variety of eggs where the egg white is uh, remotely a part of it? No. Yeah. See, I like I like I won't just like eat a hard boiled egg. Like if it's in a salad or something, that's fine. Um, and I like deviled eggs. Oh, okay. Otherwise, it's this is gonna sound really dumb cons- considering I just said I liked hard boiled eggs, but like it's too rubbery. <laughs> Um, okay, I I can understand that because it's a different kind. Like it's it's like soft but like liquidy, different but like not. But like yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's just I can't. I I have sensory processing issues, and mm-hmm. so like food texture is a thing for me. Like I don't eat bananas yeah. because I just can't like the banana texture. Um, in a smoothie, totally fine. But yeah, I just eggs. Same you with know, because everybody's <laughs> like, well, what if you get them like over easy or eggs Benedict or and I'm like, do not. Don't even try. Don't it. don't put them just on don't. the plate. Just don't. All right, there you go. Just don't. I mean, just don't. You don't like eggs unless they're occasionally an or... omelet will be okay because there's enough other stuff in there to distract yeah. from the eggs. That makes sense. Then it's just like a weird egg tortilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, plus yeah. eggs baked in things. Uh, yeah, like it's you know away. it's not like a, like in a cake or something. Like it's a that, that's no. that's along the same lines. If there's enough smoothie, other so. stuff piled in there to not notice the eggs, then yeah, I yeah. can handle it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Just like a salad. Okay, that makes that makes sense. Yeah. I, f- I feel like I'm getting to know you a little better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, cilantro is the devil. <gasps> okay, moving on. No, that's another one of those, though, right? They're like It's like right. you're 50-50. Like, do you like Miracle Whip or mayonnaise, chocolate, vanilla, cilantro is soap or it's amazing? Um, yeah. I think it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. And my ex-husband and my children fall into that group of people that think it tastes like soap. And so I mm-hmm. never get to have it in anything. Um, yeah. Unless I just put it, I sprinkle it like on my tacos after I make everything because you, you have to at that point. Ellen I mean, won't uh, eat it. Yeah. We, we just got a cilantro plant um, and my kids like cilantro and my, my wife likes cilantro. So like we've got this whole thing and I feel really I bummed for people cannot. that like it tastes like soap because that one isn't like just like an opinion, you know, like yeah, it is a genetic that like it just doesn't taste right to you. Mm-hmm. And it's a bummer because it's like, oh, if it tasted to you like it tastes to me, it's really delicious. Yeah. Like it's, it's really wild. good. But I it's get wild. that it doesn't taste that way to you. Uh, and, and it's not in, a preference my case, thing. It's a <laughs> anything it touches mm. becomes cilantro. Mm hmm. Like, no matter what amount you have in there, you get a little piece of cilantro with a bite, and the the whole bite is cilantro. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's uh, not one of those that's easily hidden, I think. Yeah. Like, it's strong. That's that's my food hot take. All right. All right. All right. Um, uh, Probably the most important question next. Yeah, the the Um, one that you've all been waiting for. (laughs) Absolutely. Of course. Of course this one is from Jude. Uh, What system would it be easiest to make a Ninja Turtle in? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say the uh, Ninja Turtle supplement for riffs. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's its its own RPG uh-huh. series. Well, it's, but it's yeah. that system, right? It's yeah, the, the, the Palladium T- system. TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangenesses, I believe, is the full title. Okay, well, um, but here's the question, right? Is like... He doesn't ask, like, which system is, like, best or, like, meant which to make an intro. Easiest. Which is the easiest. So, actually, now that I'm thinking about that, is it Maybe the easiest? It, is it the easiest? Maybe, because, These are okay, just randomly rolling, right? You've got, the, you've got the martial arts, right? And you've got, um, you've got the, the mutant animals built into the system, mm-hmm. right? So, you just pick, you pick your turtle, you pick, uh, how, how much of, uh, the animalistic form you mm-hmm. want. For your character, um, and then you pick the abilities and stuff, and and there you go. You you give them uh, like the martial arts hand to hand combat abilities, and it practically writes itself at that point. Hold on, I'm gonna grab two books off my shelf here and just look at them real quick. Oh sure. <laughs> yeah, because Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is out of print. Uh, Palladium lost the rights, I believe. To yeah, it. They and they transferred all of that, A, to Heroes Unlimited, and B, uh, to the After the Bomb role-playing game, um, which gives you all sorts of mutant animals that you can be, uh, which is interesting. Very curious what game you're looking at. I am looking at, currently, a game called Mutants in the Now. Oh, interesting. Um, it is a new game, um, which I have not finished reading yet to know, like, what kind of system and stuff it uses. 
Um, but it is specifically for uh, recreating retro modern mutant animal role playing game. Oh, very cool. Um, and looking at the character creation uh, section, just briefly, dear listeners, I have not finished reading the whole book yet. Um, it does look like this would be much easier than any Palladium game. So I'm going to go ahead impossible. and say uh, this game by JK Games. <laughs> it's in the I, now. I mean, um, and and I've read like good things about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so honestly, uh, masks would be a very easy game to make the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in A, teenagers baked into the system. Yeah. Uh, B, superheroes, which is what the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are. Uh, and, and C, you have like full control over what your characters look like. Yeah. So it's like you could just say, yeah, I'm a mutant turtle. And one of my powers is uh, ninja or wh whatever that means. Yeah. And you can flavor them however you want. It's PBTA. That might be the easiest, to, uh, since I know nothing about the game. This one at. does have random tables um, for, like, deciding what kind of animal you're going to be. Oh, that's nice. Um, and then some optional ones if you want to, like, flavor it a little bit. There you go. Um, and then you can pick your mutations. Um, yeah. They've got all kinds of intro ones all of the animals. Ooh. So, yeah, if you don't want to play a palladium game you do still want something with some random tables um yep. but something a little more modern uh i would i would say mutants in the now there you go um otherwise i do have this game called bdsm below dwelling sewer mutants oh <laughs> um which <laughs> which is a it's a zine style uh, okay. game um this one is a little more grim a little um a little more emphasis on the, the mutation part yeah. Of the mutant. Um, not so much the like crime fighting friendship part. So, okay. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Those though. are some other options if you wanted to. Uh, and I'm sure there are plenty of other games to play yes. mutants in. But I, I appreciate your professionalism with answering this question. Yes. Yeah. So take that, <laughs> Jude. You thought that you could troll me. But the answer is we can name at least three to four. For you could probably do it in Sentinels too, honestly, if you wanted oh, to. Oh yeah, I um, would say we've got a good six options on the table yeah. right now. Yeah, so take that, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. What is the best or most unique thing you've ever seen in an RPG book or PDF, and what is the worst? Mm. Oh man. This is from Daryl. From Daryl, yes. Sorry, Daryl. I was. My mind was wandering already to what cool things I've seen in books. Yeah. I've read so many books. Yeah, you've got a very unique perspective on this sort of question that yeah. I'm sure a lot of it's jumbled together at this yeah, point. Yeah, our listeners can't see the pile behind me of, yeah. <laughs> of books. That's, that's this year's physical submissions. Uh huh. Um, gosh. Best or most unique? Interesting. I'm gonna have to really I, I'd say probably the worst. Man, I don't know. Gosh. Even that's not the worst. I'm thinking the 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 rolling table in the back of of Marvel superheroes. Yeah, I mean, um, so like this is this is one of those times where it's like define worst, right? Are we talking about like exactly. worst like mechanics? Why like this is this is stupid? Or are we talking worst like this is like a really bad thing? Right. Because um, definitely, I've read some books that have some like really bad things in them. Oh yeah. Um, I would know, say so like, just let's, like from like a... let's not touch those like those things that are like actively problematic. Mm -hmm. I've I've seen a lot, and I'm not gonna like list which ones are the worst. Right. Um, like just bad mechanics and stuff. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. And I think for me, it's a lot of times where like I read a game, and I think, um, I think that like the designers are really well intentioned and probably had like a really good idea but for me the worst thing is when i can't follow how you got from a to b yeah um because i just want to be like take me on the journey with you <laughs> mm -hmm. like because it, it'll be like okay step one do this and then step four it's like with the five tokens that you've set out in front of you i'm like wait we have tokens now uh -huh. where did those come from <laughs> like so for me it's just really like you know and there's a balance to be had between like you know, mm -hmm. okay, like open the jar of peanut butter with your right hand, hold the knife and put the knife into the jar. Of you know, like I don't <laughs> like I'm not a child, but sometimes I'm like, wait, where did this where did this card come from? Like, what mm -hmm. are we? Where, how did that get on the table? What are we doing? You know, yeah. so for me, that's 
that's always the worst because I get frustrated and mm-hmm. I like reread the same thing six times. And I'm like, am I stupid? Did you miss something? <laughs> Do other people understand this? Right. Um, and it's, yeah, for me, that's the worst because it's not bad. It's not actively mm-hmm. bad. And it's like, there probably are people that this isn't a problem for. It's just yeah. that like, oh, like the rest of your game is good. I just don't understand how to play it. <laughs> right. Like, I think you're onto something, but I'm not there with you. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, I get that. Absolutely. Oh, uh, what about one of the best things or most unique things? Yeah, I'm really trying to like. <sighs> There's a lot, right? Um, I, I mean, I probably my answer for this would be, um, the the mechanics of Starcrossed, like directly, uh, giving you those those feelings. real life feelings. That is probably the place where my fascination with that interaction came from. Yeah. Um, because it's, it's something to this point where I've like, I, I've become obsessed with it. Um, that is, it is what I look for in good game design. Mm-hmm. It's, it is why I am so insistent that you can't run everything in 5e. Yeah. Um, because your mechanics should reinforce how you want a game to feel like mm-hmm. doing the thing should make you feel a way. Yeah. And um, I think that is the game where where that really cemented that interaction for me. That was like you can do like this is they really do connect mm-hmm. um, because before that I hadn't I hadn't felt that connection. So actually, I'm going to say um, in answer to this question, it is a game that is not out yet. Mm. Um, it is we're gonna, I think we're going to do a spotlight episode on it. Um, our our friend Father Ben. Um, who has been on the show um, in our uh, Romance and Games Evolution yep. cast. And then we were over on his um, Holy Happy Hour Batman mm-hmm. stream, um, is writing a game called Broken. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is about uh, when relationships end. Okay. And one of the mechanics in there is that you you grab objects and as part of the ending of scenes and the breakdown of this relationship, you physically break these objects. Oh boy. And, um, like I had to stop reading it. He <laughs> sent me a copy to read ahead of time. Um, like before the, the Kickstarter that I think they're going to do like later this summer. Mm. Um, and I, I had to stop reading and like take a minute and be like, Holy crap, you're onto something like the mm-hmm. way that the tower creates tension in dread and in star crossed mm-hmm. it has this very visceral feeling of like this thing is ruined and we cannot put it back together yeah it has this feeling of um like sort of the rage and the sadness associated with breaking something with something falling apart mm-hmm. um as you go through the stages of this relationship and it's like involves defining characteristics about the other person of like, this is how I used to see you. And this is how I see you now. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just, I mean, like it hit me in the gut in a way that like, I read a lot of games. I read a lot, a lot of games. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's often very hard to, to sort of grasp what that interaction looks like without playing it or without talking Mm -hmm. it through with the designer saying like, this was the intention of the thing. Um, that game was a gut punch, especially as somebody who's gone through a divorce, which, um, you know, which is part of the reason that he sent it to me, um, to look at was cause like, it's like, I want your opinion as somebody who's been through this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I would say when that comes out on Kickstarter in like July or August, or when we put out our spotlight episode, um, please listen to that. Like I'm getting like teary eyed just talking about it, but it just, um, <laughs> But you got me excited. Unfortunately, it's one that like it does require like some physical components, though. Granted, I think the other person, because I think you each pick a certain number. I'd have to read it again. Um, You could maybe potentially do it in different places Um, Mm -hmm. or. um, Yeah, there were different there are a couple different ways to play it. But um, yeah, yeah, the idea of just like physically breaking objects and like, you know, destroying something that you can't undo. Mm -hmm. um, Just really. Oof. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think good that's stuff. my answer. <laughs> that's I think a, my answer is a game a that none answer. of you have seen yet, but I promise. <laughs> um, oh, boy. Yeah. If you love uh, a gut punch, that stay one. Stay tuned. Yeah. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Which is oh, what I goodness. mean, we've, we've said lots of times, it's what I love in games. Like, I love when yep. they make you feel things. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Give me all the feels. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so I guess we can go on to the next question. Uh, this one is another anonymous submission. Um, if you could actually run one game with characters from C3, uh, which one would you want to end up playing and why? Um, there's a decent amount of answers. Yeah, this is tough. This is this tough. Is like really tough. Uh, which one of your children do you love more, Amelia? <laughs> seriously it it depends on the day we still haven't like uh i started a spreadsheet um dear listeners to chronicle all the characters that we and our guests have made uh for questions and situations just like this yeah um i i got as far as listing all the games that we've covered Mm -hmm. and boy it's been a lot um and a little uh tip of the iceberg for the amount of characters that we've created um, uh, which is technically even more. Yeah, we've been um, trying to get better about like getting character sheets from people so that we can we can do some of that. I've been yeah for a little while. I was trying to go back and re-listen and like make notes of what people chose and stuff. But that's a process too of mm-hmm. listening and re-listening and re-listening. <laughs> um, right. Ooh. I I think it always like depends on the day of like what game I'm in the mood for too. It's true. Um, I mean, goodness gracious, the uh, Thirsty Sword Lesbians would be just a heck of a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, any, any of the Star-Crossed groups mm-hmm. that we made way back in Series 3. Yeah. I would I would drop almost everything to, to play uh, any of those characters. I'm actually going to say our Masks characters. Like having just our, re-listened oh. to those episodes while I was making a playlist for it. Um, Those are fantastic. Yeah, they're just fun and sweet and like, Mm -hmm. I love the choices we made and why we made them. Yep. Um, Yeah, I actually really want to play Unbound too, because like I love the world that we built for that. It was so much fun. Um, Yeah, goodness. I mean, I'm just looking down the list of games that we've uh, that we've covered on the show uh, because I have that much at least. Yeah. And like uh, a trash mob sounds super fun. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not like 100% like, oh, this is my favorite character that I've ever made. But the game itself sounds yeah. like just a blast yeah. to play. Yeah. So we've got we've got multiple answers for this question, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I think the reality is like we're not joking when we get to the end of the episode and we're like, oh, I wish we could play this. Uh-huh. Um, It's. We do feel that strongly every time. Um, yeah. I, I always have a hard time remembering when we get to these questions. It's like, okay, what did I, I make? I remember we that make? we recorded those episodes and I remembered mm-hmm. I liked that game. Yep. But like, I don't I can't remember. I can't remember what I did concept. or why I did it. Um, it it's all, it, there's a lot that's blurring together at this point. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, there, a lot of them kind of stick out. Like, I mean, also uh, anyone can wear the mask. Uh, with yeah. Jeff Storner, that I mean, that would be fantastic to play a whole game of that with with what we came Definitely. up. Definitely, I am uh, on record as being a big fan of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> it was my my Any's judges pick last year. That's um, very true because it was a great game, and I wanted the world to know about it. It was, yeah, absolutely, um, and just so unique. Like that's another one with like really unique, interesting mechanics. Mm-hmm. Um, how after this many years of games, are people still like? Doing new things, but yeah, I mean it's the whole the whole evolution of the uh, you know the the hobby, right? Right. And well, but it, like, it it constantly like blows my mind the way people are like, yeah. no, this is a game now, and it's like, yep. oh, okay, cool. Like, oh, we, we can play that. We can game <laughs> that. Correct. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Cool. Uh, thank you. May I have another? Right. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love Absolutely. It. So yeah, I, I think that answers that that question pretty pretty succinctly. Yeah, I think we we gave a very clear, concise answer to that question, which yep. was like, uh, <laughs> yes, games, we do enjoy yep. them, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we've got a lot of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, this question is from Kevin. Mm-hmm. If Ryan became a magical girl villain that Necromelia had to defeat, what kind of villain would they be, Ooh. and how would you ultimately take them down? I like this question. Did I make notes on this? <laughs> Gosh. 
Oh, I wrote because I, I, I wrote these down as I was reading yeah. these questions because there were some that I was like, this requires a thoughtful answer. So here's yeah. my here's my thoughtful answer. All right, I'm, I'm ready for it. It technically depends on Ryan's powers, but my best guess is it'll be done through the undying bonds of love and friendship. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so how, how does that translate to a villain? Is it like... We always defeat villains with love and friendship. Oh, you would but, have to defeat me with love right, and friendship. Right, because you are a magical girl villain. Yes. And I, Necromelia, have to defeat you, which is why I said it was important that these are the undying bonds of friendship. Oh, you would mm. you would uh, necro raise the bonds of love and friendship. Right. That's creative. I would take the power like of all of the friendships that ever were or ever oh. would be. Okay, that that's I got goosebumps from that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So what type of uh, what kind of villain would I be? Yeah, that's the question, right? Uh, right. Okay, so that's that's a very good answer. I would have to, I don't know. It, Ryan can't even like process the idea of being a villain. Kevin, how dare you enter this question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think because like the best villain is a villain that thinks they're not the villain, but they're doing. You've been villain hanging out things. with me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, moral gray areas. Uh huh. Because, like, if, if they think, like, I'm doing this for the good of the world, um, you know. Yeah, I don't this... think, like, mustache twirling isn't interesting to me. Like, it's right. not, or at least not for as long. Yeah, so, I mean, gathering the energy of everybody in a specific city because, you know, I have to feed some, like, uh, some some god that's telling me what to do. Um, I mean, that's that's kind of a standard trope in the magical girl thing. And I right. don't think I would be that sort of villain. Um, yeah, it's gosh, I, 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 something dramatic would have to happen for me to to just snap and, <laughs> and right. go down this this route. But like I, I would have to be I, let's just reverse what I am. And and that would be my magical girl villain um, where I would I would attempt to take away um, all the joy and uh, whatnot in the world um, because I don't know. Because someone took it away from you first. Maybe. Maybe that's it. Or, or uh, maybe instead of a, like a less selfish reason, like. Take take all the joy in the world so I can redistribute it, but then like, who am I to say who gets what? I guess mm -hmm. or something. I don't know. Yeah, Ryan. Ryan can't even process this. He can't even like no, grasp why someone would be a villain. I cannot. I mean, okay, I can, but I can't. I don't know. All right, we got a, we got quite a few more questions to get through. We do. Um, this might be a three parter at this rate. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, this one might be a pretty fast question. Uh, it's it's from Jude, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, is ooze-based mutation a form of blood magic? And if so, are ninja turtles lost or oni? Uh, it is not blood magic. No, um, I would say no. Because it doesn't, like, unless, no, it's not. Your blood it, doesn't it, mutate it, you. It doesn't. Right. No. It mutates the blood. It does right. not. It's not the blood that is the mutating. Right, exactly. Unless the ooze is blood, which I don't. I don't know if it's not. I haven't been too deep into the TMNT right, so like, lore. It is not in your veins, though. Like, blood right. starts out in your veins, and you can, yeah, yeah. you know, taint it with dark magic. But mm -hmm. ooze is already outside of you, right? It's yeah, an yeah. external force that comes in and changes you. Yep. It's um, the whereas in this case, actually, the magic is the thing that's changing the blood, not mm -hmm. the blood changes. So, no, the answer is yep. no. There you um, go. In which case... I also think that they would be lost, not Oni, because I think that they have been corrupted into mm -hmm. being Ninja Turtles. Oh, they were go. not born as Ninja Turtles. That makes sense. Right? Yeah. They were just born as regular turtles. Right. And once the ooze got then a hold of them, they, and they grew into up and... Mm -hmm. Ninja Turtles. Right. Yep. So, like, Oni are Oni. Lost are corrupted beings so there you go uh that is my very academic answer to those questions dude uh, you I'm keep trying to fool that. me but you can't there, <laughs> there you go <laughs> 
two down. Aha. We'll see how many more to go. All right. <laughs> Every so often we just pepper one in there just to try and trip me up and you can't. Uh-huh. Um, Kevin, we're going to try and give you a real answer to this one. Uh, which game would you like to be the next one shot secret bonus one shot? Oh. So like, what do we want to put in the secret archive? Thing? I think that's what this question's asking. Yeah. Um, do we have a list? I know like I've I don't made think we like have a little a folder list. of like one page games. We've it's got a bunch hard of one to page do games. like the micro games um, just because we have mm-hmm. to find one that has a robust enough character creation. Yeah. Which in a one page game is a little bit tough sometimes. It is tough. Um, um, I, I did just release a, my own game, mm-hmm. uh, a new game to the world. Um, it's a magical beach episode. Uh-huh. Uh, B-E-E is how you spell beach. Um, because you play as uh, magical girl bees and that, that are actual bees that can transform into actual magical guardian bees. So they're um, magical bees. They're magical bees. Magical yes, girl bees. Yeah, magical girl bees. Okay. And you are on vacation and uh, and you uh, <laughs> you get interrupted by the, the arch nemesis. And, and that's that's the whole story. Plays a lot like lasers and feelings. OK. Yeah. But Does it's, it have it's some by, character creation in it, though? It, ha- it has character creation. You get accessories to pick out or, or roll randomly. Um. And yeah, it's 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 not too bad. Uh, I think I think that would be a fun one to to expose the world to. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I can't make a decision right now. Um, so I guess Kevin, we can't give you an answer. Uh, <laughs> we tried. No, we tried. Um, <laughs> We're so close. No, because I think I think we want something. It, it's a really like it's a little sweet spot of you know short bonus content that we can do character creation for in a mm-hmm. pretty quick amount of time because those bonus episodes are a little shorter. Yep. Um. Not a little shorter, they're way shorter. Way shorter. Uh, what are we in the mood for? But also enough of a character creation that we feel like it actually creates yep. content. You know, something more than like picking the color of your hat. Like, I'm blue hat guy. Yeah. You know, like, which is a game I just made up. Um, <laughs> Quick stamp and throw it on the itch. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's just a table. You roll to see what color your hat is. That's the whole game. <laughs> That's the whole game. That's the whole game. Figure out the rest. Yeah. It's not, like, do what you want with it, man. I don't know. Yep. It's a supplement uh, for any game. It's system yep. neutral. <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I'm going to make an itch that's just Amelia makes stupid tables. And it's just going to be like, roll on this table to find out what what kind of shoes you have on today. It's you loafers. Honestly, you honestly could make some actual money off of that. I could. Believe I it could. or not. Ah, the power. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, Kevin, we don't have an answer to your question. Uh, it's fine. Yeah. No, we don't have a one shot that we want. Mm-hmm. So is the answer No. Was it a yes or no yes question? Yes or no, maybe. I mean, if uh, we're going to, what is it, probably so it's just which game? Which game? I game? thought it was like, is there a game that you want? And the answer would be no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which game? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But if you, if you have a fun like little one page short game that you think that we should try out, let us know. Yeah. yeah, especially if we could get some actual play in there for the bonus. That'd be mm-hmm. nice. Yeah, if we could do yeah, another Sims players? 4 eSports. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was trying to give it all my best, and yeah. uh, that was that was the best I could do. That's, that's great. That's fine. <laughs> four out of five doctors millipede recommend. Exactly. Seems four uh, <laughs> T-shirts in your store now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Next question. Uh, this one is from anonymous. Um, what is your favorite genre to create characters in, and why? Hmm. Hmm. Romance, okay. Um, because, uh, or or at least genres where or, or or games that have romance as like a like a subplot you know, or a sub mechanic of sorts. Mm-hmm. If it's not the main draw of the story, that it's yeah. like at least a decent amount in there. Mm-hmm. Um, because the the relationship questions in there are probably going to be pretty great to, to set up yeah. that sort of like dynamic uh, with the other character or characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think those are definitely the ones that I come out of our character creations being like, 
give me give me more give me give me me. yeah um yeah i would agree with that i think um more more broadly anything with magic um Mm -hmm. it you know like because i don't i don't think i need to narrow it down necessarily and be like you know it's like a medieval fantasy or like modern yeah. magic like i don't you know i i do not describe it can you do magics mm-hmm. um can it be bad magic can it be blood magic yeah <laughs> um yeah i like magic i like magic because i like the way that it mm-hmm. flavors everything i like the way that it it changes your perception of what can and can't be done yes. in a world yep um you know which which tech does to some degree um but mm-hmm. I, I feel like that is is a little more beholden to the laws of physics and reality than yes. magic. So, mm-hmm. and I, I just think there's so many more options for flavoring magic and how you do it and why you do it and what you do with it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, magic. Magic. My favorite, my favorite genre is magic. There you go. <laughs> but not um, Magic the Gathering. Um, though no. I, I do enjoy playing Magic the Gathering. I haven't in a long time, but I do there you go. enjoy y- it. Yu-Gi-Oh adjacent. It is. Yeah. 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 There you go. I think- <laughs> I like magic. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, also, you throw magical girls in the mix, and I'm happy. So, well, I already I, said magic, Ryan. I know. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, okay. Is it my question? Yes, yes your it is. question. What is one piece of advice you would give designers to always do or include in their books, and one thing you would beg them to avoid or stop doing? This is from Daryl. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that question, yes, Daryl. Yes. Thank you. I actually have a really quick easy answer to this for what i would want them to do yes if your book is more than like let's generously say 50 pages Mm -hmm. um ideally like 25 if your book is longer than that please give me a quick start page in the front Mm. just give me a quick rundown of like you know you're gonna roll these kind of dice you're going Mm -hmm. to um you know, like a character does this, you have a class, you have, you know, just like a quick, like one page rules guide that I can look at and get the gist of what this system is. Mm -hmm. Um, I would look to an example like heart, I think has a really good quick start right in the front. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think, I know there are a couple other ones, but heart is the one that like pops into Mm -hmm. my, my brain quickest. Um, it, it helps me as somebody reading the book to kind of quickly understand, like, is this a game for me? Yeah. Um, because there are things that I'm just like, that. I don't want to. I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want 800 skills. I don't want to. Not everything is for everyone. Yes. Um, and I, I can certainly see a designer listening to this and hesitating and being like, but I want you to read my book before you make a decision. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it helps me to kind of know what I'm walking into when I then read the rest of the book mm-hmm. to, like, have a frame of reference of like, okay, I know that we're, you know, this is a D100 roll under kind of system. Mm-hmm. And that helps me process the rest of the information in the book through that lens. Mm-hmm. So um, I just think it makes it a lot more accessible for people too. Um, oh, yeah. And for new players Absolutely. learning the game for me to be able to quickly say, okay, like turn to page 25. Here's a quick rough guide yeah. of what this is going to look like. Yeah, I know uh, Simbarum. Uh, has a quick start, uh, mm-hmm. like of the mechanics of how to play the game and yeah. like how initiative works and like how you roll your stats and yep. and it's like it's like this little two page thing yep. that you can just go right to and and not only as beginners but like as a reference like what what goes first what who wins this tie right. you know, that sort of thing right. uh, which is really great um, yeah more games do need to have that. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. When I roll a skill check, which things am I looking at? You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's like you're going to take yeah. one thing from this category, one thing from this category. And am I adding them up? Am I taking the highest die? Am I just, mm-hmm. you know, real simple stuff. Um, yep. I know it's probably very hard to choose what things go on there. But yeah. do remember that you did put it in the book so I can find it somewhere if I need it. Yep. But oh, absolutely. it's um, absolutely hands down makes the process of reading the rest of the book a million mm-hmm. times easier for me. Yes, 100%. Uh, my answer for always include, no matter the size of the game, uh, safety tools, at the very least, the mention of safety tools uh, and where to find tools. Uh, if not, you know, full blown, this is a safety tool I recommend for this game. Here's mm-hmm. why, here's how you use it, uh, here's the situations you'd use it in. 
Yeah, uh, a lot of books that I've, I'm reading now have that. Um, yeah. They have, like, I, I would say the vast majority of the ones that I've read for Annie's this year. Um, yeah. That, you know, like, other than, like, the zines. Um, and even some of those still have it. Um, mm-hmm. And the majority of them, you know, link to, um, like, the RPG safety toolkit or yep. the X card or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of them don't have, like, a full rundown of everything because mm-hmm. I think... I th- I personally am okay with that because I think that it choosing the right safety tool for your table is a, just as important as choosing the right game exactly. for your table. Exactly. Um, I know it does like add a, an extra step of like, okay, now I have to go to this link and find the thing. But mm-hmm. um, I will say that is, is definitely a, a trend in the right direction that I'm seeing a lot right. more of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, definitely more safety at tables uh, can't hurt at all. Index. So. Please put an index in the uh, back of your book. Would be nice. And if you're doing a PDF, uh, please, 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 please bookmark the make crap them out of that puppy. Bookmarked. If you could, that, that would be so helpful. No, just do it. Not if you could. I mean, I know it's, I, I know it is a process. Yeah. It is. Um, I know it's, it's time consuming and annoying um, for sure. Mm-hmm. But it's not hard. Right. Like it doesn't require like special software or anything like that. You know, it's, you mm-hmm. can. You, do, um, you just need the knowledge of how to do it. Right. 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 And and that'll take a little bit of Googling um, and, and finding the answer. And I'm sure it's it's pretty uh, widely available on how to do things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Definitely makes know, it easier. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, things to not include. I mean, aside from the standards of like, you know. Yeah. Aside from the gross stuff. Colonialism and racism and, you know. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> uh, what? Or at least mechanics wise, maybe. Um what would you beg designers to stop including in their books? Um I don't know. I cause I feel like there's there, you know, there's definitely stuff in there that like I am like annoyed by. Like I still yeah. have like this nagging annoyance of the what is a role playing game? But I mm. understand why it's in there because yeah. you know, Especially the number of people we've had game. on our show that are like, I picked up this D and D book and I didn't know what it was. So like, mm-hmm. I get it. There are people out there that like stumble on these books and are like, huh? Um, yeah. so that's fine. I can just skip that section. Yeah. You know, I think if that's how I feel about most of the stuff that I'm like, why is this in here? It's like, Oh, mm-hmm. just skip it. Yeah. I, I, I would say it's less of a trend nowadays, but, um, any designers thinking of uh, where the where the the game master is the the rule of the, the land and everything stops at them and you know they're the like the giving them that mm-hmm. power dynamic yeah that's don't gross. don't don't do that yeah don't tell them they're all powerful they're not right uh, yeah it. it Maybe treat them as, you know, players in the game as well. And it's you know, just it a different kind of goes, it goes both like ways, I right? Am, you know, like I'm playing the sorcerer and mm-hmm. you're playing the paladin and you're playing the DM. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you need to have uh, a, a healthy balance between everybody. And, you know, mm-hmm. uh, forcing that as part of the dynamic is uh, kind of gross. Yeah. So... Uh, I would say avoid doing that. Yep. There you go. All right. Uh, next question. This is from uh, Derek D. Uh, Derek asked, um, let's see, what is the worst book or movie that has provided you uh, game and or character ideas? Huh. Yeah, this is a tough one. I'm just like trying to think of like even like a bad book or movie. Like, I don't know why this is really hard for me right now because I'm sure I've seen lots of. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. And then, like, wh- when did I translate that into a character? Because mm-hmm. I'm sure that I have. Mm-hmm. This is a really hard question. I I'm sure I've probably used something for like dirge in the back of my brain. Right, right. But like, where would that have come from? Right. I mean, I just leaned into the uh, the Western mm-hmm. tropes. Um, and there's probably a lot of bad Western movies. I haven't like fully seen a Western movie. Um, like ever? Personally, like ever, like from front to fin- finish, from start to finish. Are you serious? I pro- prob, I mean, I mean, aside from like, maybe like, like Tombstone or, uh, The Magnificent Seven, um, 
like more of the modern ones, I guess. If you could call, uh, what's that one that was really bad with the spider robot? Uh, I think it was Will Smith. Oh, Wild Wild West. Yeah. See, if I just like when you say like westerns, Western. I think like the classic, like John Wayne. Yeah, like, that's what I'm thinking. The yeah, classic okay. westerns, I have not seen anything of um, because it never really interested <sighs> me. Um, I know there's a lot going on in that sentence. There's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> Sorry, you're talking to someone whose grandparent had a John Wayne room in their house. Right. Um, like like he like had an entire room devoted to John Wayne mm-hmm. um, and his collection of John Wayne movies oh, wow. and um yeah my, my grandpa was like a huge fan of westerns mm-hmm. so like that's how i grew up is like oh, you, you know i mean granted my mom's family's from texas and mm-hmm. um you know so that makes sense it's not like really like the classic like midwestern no uh, <laughs> you know gunslingers <laughs> yep um that's for deer hunting <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know I, I i'm sorry derek i don't think i have a really good answer for this question i'm sure that there are mm. Um, I think in a lot of cases, it's more like broad tropes from things as opposed right. to like specific characters or something like that. I think there have been plenty of times where we've we've probably talked about it even like, oh, you yeah. know, random traits or something that we've pulled from somewhere. But I can't. Yeah. Um, and and it's very subjective, too. Like I, I have most certainly pulled character ideas from the Wheel of Time mm-hmm. and whether or not. That series is, quote Good. unquote, the worst yeah. uh, or whatever is very subjective. I personally love it. I know it's problematic in a lot of places. Uh, but I did create a character from that that I based off of the main character of those books because I love those books. And back then uh, I needed a character and I was like, eh, I'll base it off of this person from the books because why not? I mean, my goodness, if we're going to talk about that, then, like, we've covered L5R on the show, and I have read L5R books, and they are problematic. Like, I have read the novels. Like, There you go. So. And have you created any characters in L5R that had any sort of, like, inspiration from any of those? Like, yes. There you go. Yes. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, we, we found it. We did it. it. We it, got it there, took, Derek. We, we got, got there. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, the next question also does not have a name. It's anonymous. Mm-hmm. Uh, if Ryan and Amelia were adventurers or explorers, what would be your classes, equipment, and pets slash familiars slash crew? Oh, fun. Hmm. Okay. So I think the, the first thing we need to establish here in this scenario is yeah. uh, what kind of adventure slash, what kind of adventure slash exploration are we doing? Are we talking like, Indiana Jones? Are we mm. talking like standard D and D group? Um, like where do you stand- want to go? Like I would say, um, yeah, because it, it very much sounds like this is coming from a like a D and D space, right? Yeah, because you're you're using terms like classes, right? Um, and, and familiars, familiars uh, right. that sort of stuff. Um, so so maybe that sort of thing, but I would. S- I would say we could get a little creative with it. Um, you know, if you want to pull from different genres, that's fine. Um, honestly, I'm all for genre blending. So. Okay, so let's let's just for the sake of like answering this question at some point. Um, let's say we're talking classic fantasy adventure. Yeah. Um, what what would your class be? See. Most people would probably uh, say paladin Mm -hmm. just because, you know, goody, goody, uh, do gooder of goodness. Right. Right. For sure. Um, I don't think it would be paladin, though. No. uh, Because you're you're beholden to uh, the whims of your deity. Yes. And whether or not they ask you to do, you know, something against your moral code. uh is not up to you. Right. Um, so you might be, you might be doing things, uh, you know, like taking a life, for instance. I don't, I don't have any interest in doing that, obviously. Um, but, you know, a, a, a deity that a paladin uh, worships and serves, uh, they might be asked to do that even if they are a pacifist. Yeah. Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so maybe bard, but okay. some kind of magic user. Uh, would be fun too. 
Um, I guess with the right patron, maybe a warlock, depending on what the deal is. But see, then you're in the same boat that you would be with a paladin. Depending on the deal, though. With the paladin, it's like I devote everything to you and I'm your I'm going to fight in justice in, in your name. Right. But, but you would hope that if you're going to make that kind of, of devotion, it would be like. Right. Worthwhile. Right. Warlock is like, OK, I need power for X mm-hmm. and I have to do Y. And in return, you get. Yeah. In return. Yeah. Um, and so if the right deal is struck. Um, I would be perfectly fine with getting some sort of like, uh, you know, magical guardian powers and transformation uh, in order to do something for a very good uh, patron. Yeah. Right. I still don't understand why bards are magic. I I mean, right. <laughs> I don't get it. Ever, ever since Dylan brought that up. I'm oh, like, it's always bothered me. It's yeah. like, why? Oh, like, you know, it's like, I studied for forever. I made a deal with the devil. I play guitar. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, honestly, it's, it's uh, <laughs> making making music into uh, magic mm-hmm. is very similar to making hand gestures and words into magic. You're just manipulating the ambient magics in a slightly different way. Right. But then, like, why is that a whole different class? Exactly. Because you can also use a sword and you can also sneak a little bit and you can also steal a little bit and you can also be the face of the party a little bit. So the bard is I don't want to make a decision. It's your, it's your character, charismatic, jack of all trades wizard. Yeah. Hot <laughs> takes. Yeah, I would say warlock if I can get a good deal out of it. All right. Um, I think I would be a wizard. Yeah. I think I don't, I don't see myself as like, I, I don't think highly enough of myself <laughs> to think that I have like some sort of like innate power within me mm-hmm. to like be a sorcerer. Right. I don't, right. I don't think that, but I am also a big old nerd. So I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. And I'm comfortable can... being the kind of person that like, <laughs> whoops, found a scroll. Yep. You know, I'm cool with that. Exactly. I'm, you know, yeah. um, I would absolutely have a magical companion. Yeah. Like 100 percent. If I could have like a pet that I could literally talk to. For sure. Uh, and have conversations with, that would be phenomenal. Yeah, I would love to do that in real life right now to be like, Peggy, why are you barking out of nowhere? Yeah, exactly. Because she's definitely doing that right now. Yeah. I think she was upset because she thought I was going to say something else for my familiar, but it would be a golden <laughs> doodle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I would have a... This is my emotional would, support familiar. And, right. <laughs> exactly. And, and I would have a uh, an adorable kitty. Nate asked me the other day if he could have an emotional support Pokemon. And I was like, I assume that's what all Pokemon are. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Why else would you have them? Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you think you can well, be allergic to familiars? Like to other people's familiars? Oh, I would hope because they're magical. Definitely. Like you can't, they, right? Unless they Unless they magically don't have dander. If that's a property of familiars, I guess. I mean, that would be cool, right? Like, why? I mean, be cool. I, like, I don't know. If you can make your pet talk, why can't you also make it hypoallergenic? Right. Well, in some systems, uh, a familiar is actually a fey turned into the form of your familiar. So it's in not even. It it's like a shed. Right. It's like a magical being in the form of kitty right. or puppy. Right. Yeah. So maybe. Great. A fey shed? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't. If they do, I doubt I'm allergic to it. So. Are are fairy realms dusty? Uh, if so, then yes. I mean, there is fairy dust. Oh. Oh. We just oh, we just unlocked we got it. There. Oh, that that allergy dander is all over yep. the place with the fae. Yep. It's just magical. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It'll make you sneeze and make you fly. Yeah. Any equipment you'd pick? Ah. Uh, um. Cool, cool outfit. Yeah, I mean, I'm like like some like super dope robes. Like that's like yeah, the yeah. extent. Of, like really, my equipment choices are like how cool do I look? Right. Uh, practical stuff. Because I too. can like do magic. So mm-hmm. the rest of it is how cool do I look? Yeah. No, I would have like uh, magical items that do things like uh, you know, like a flashlight that that never runs out of magical flashlight ability. Mm. But basically just an object that glows forever. Um, you know, utility things like that, a rope that lets you climb itself. 
like or like you just hold on and it pulls you up so i don't have to climb the rope um you know i think i would have a bag of like very specific one-time use items Mm -hmm. that like the majority of the time are useless but that one time you need it oh boy and a bag of holding for all of this Mm -hmm. because like just being able to store everything, like you said, the the whole like, what do I get rid of? Yeah, because we hold? discussed. I am not about just uncomfortable. Shove it in the bag of holding, and you're you're good as long as you don't shove a dimensional portal in there, uh, and blow up everybody around you. Uh, you're fine. Yeah. Or another bag of holding. There you go. I think that answers that one. I think so. Yeah. So that was a lot of really good questions. Thank you. Yeah, and we talked a lot about that. We did talk a lot. I um, <laughs> a lot I th- honestly, I think there was a lot of good conversation to be had here. I hope some people have gotten something out of what we've done. Uh, like, we want to not only answer your questions so you know a bit more about us, we also want to have a little bit of advice thrown in there. We want to have something to take away. We we want this to be more than just a, hey, hear about Emilia and Ryan. Yes. Uh, hour or two, I guess, at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so we hope you enjoyed. Yeah, we had fun. I, I really appreciate some of these. Um, I, I appreciate the fun questions. I appreciate questions from anyone who wasn't named Jude. Um, <laughs> Even and, the ones from Jude were pretty good answers. I mean, I had great answers to them. They were terrible questions. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I really appreciate the fact that we... We got some really thoughtful, interesting questions. There are definitely some in there that we had to we had to really think about. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm I'm looking forward to answering more of these next time. Absolutely. So we'll uh, we'll be recording the the next batch um, sometime soon. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Uh, we'll we'll have the content out there at some point. You'll you'll get there. Uh, two episodes, three episodes, maybe even four episodes. That's Who knows? Who can say? Who can say? Not us, uh, certainly. Not us. I'm not turning the form off. So if if it happens that there's still more questions pouring in, maybe we'll save them. Maybe we'll answer them. Who knows? Only we do. And we don't. So. And we don't. <laughs> exactly. No. So thank you for listening. Thank you for submitting your questions. If we didn't get to them this episode, we will get to them at some point. Um, we're mm-hmm. going to keep working our way through. We just don't want to put out a six hour episode. So oh. um, you don't want to listen to a six hour episode, honestly. exactly but thank you everyone for submitting them thank you for listening for the last four years it has been Mm -hmm. great um we could not do this without you Mm -hmm. absolutely uh spread the word and uh leave those questions if you have more and uh keep making those amazing people we'll see you next time Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time.
we got to read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you will find other great shows like One Shot. The most fun way to learn about new games is to play. On One Shot, you can discover the amazing variety in RPGs by listening to actual play. Every week, James D'Amato brings you a new episode with a talented cast of improvisers, game designers, and other notable nerds. At least once a month, One Shot features a new system exploring a wide variety of genres. The stories are self-contained, so you can jump in anywhere, and it's a great way to find your new favorite game. Discover the magic of RPGs with One Shot and your favorite podcast app.